Are you better off with a hardtail mountain bike or full suspension? That's a question that's been asked since the very early days of the sport. And while it's pretty much settled in the world of enduro and downhill, in cross-country racing, the question burns as bright as ever. Hi, I'm John from Merida, and in this video, I'm gonna run through the pros and cons of a cross-country hardtail, like this Big 9 XT, versus a full suspension cross-country bike like this 96 RC XT. As you'd expect, they both share a lot in common. These two particular bikes have lightweight frames made from carbon fiber. They both run 29 inch wheels with lightly treaded and fast rolling tires. Both bikes also have 100 mm travel forks up front with a lockout to prevent them from moving on big climbs or hard sprints. Of course, it's once you get to the back end of the bikes that the differences are really obvious. While the Big Nine seat and chain stays are flattened slightly in order to act like a leaf spring to give greater comfort, the 96 uses our lightweight P-Flex rear suspension system. That gives a full 100mm of travel, but while doing away with the rear pivot and relying on carbon's natural flex, additional weight is kept to a minimum. Of course, cross-country racing is all about efficiency and this is where the hardtail wins big. The lack of rear suspension means every ounce of effort is transferred to the rear tire without any hesitation. Not having any pivots or a rear shock also means the hardtail is lighter, which can make a real difference to how much effort it takes to accelerate and climb on it. Less weight will always make a bike faster uphill, and is especially important when you're dealing with short, sharp climbs and punchy acceleration on a race course. That's not to say the hardtail is always the winner when it comes to climbing, though. Most full suspension cross-country bikes like this 96 are fitted with dual lockouts to stiffen up the suspension at either end and improve in climbing efficiency, basically turn them into a hardtail or even a full rigid when you want to. Though it's inevitably heavier, having rear suspension is often a big advantage on rough technical climbs, where the increased traction can prevent the rear wheel slipping. That in turn will allow more of your energy to be turned into forward motion rather than wasted as wheel spin. Of course, the biggest advantage of rear suspension is that it allows you to descend faster and push harder on rough and rocky descents, sailing through where you'd be worried about damaging tires or losing control on a hardtail. A full suspension cross-country bike is also much more comfortable, and that means it requires less effort to descend or climb quickly, which will reduce fatigue on longer rides or during marathon events. Obviously, at the very highest levels of cross-country racing, the pros will have both a hardtail and full sus bike to choose from. Which one they'll ride will depend on the race format and terrain. For long, rough, marathon and multi-day events, the greater comfort of the full susser will often win despite the weight penalty, allowing the rider to stay feeling fresh and allowing them to recover on sections where the hardtail would simply beat them up. It's a similar story on the rougher and more technical World Cup XC race courses, where the weight disadvantage is outweighed by the superior control and descending capability. However, for short course races where it's all about smashing out peak power, the hardtail is still an important tool, especially if it's on a smoother course. You simply can't beat the raw immediacy of the power transfer or the pure efficiency that a hardtail delivers. So is the answer to have both? If you're a pro then maybe, but in the real world that's just not possible for most riders. To this point the price comes in. Comparing like for like, a hardtail will always be more affordable than a full sus as there are fewer components and the frame is easier to manufacture. Not having a rear shock or pivot means there's less maintenance too, which also often makes them cheaper to run in the long term. To sum up, you should choose a hardtail cross-country bike if you want the lightest, most efficient bike possible and comfort is less of an issue. Your descents and climbs are generally smoother. You're on a tighter budget and want fewer maintenance costs. You might be best suited to a full suspension cross-country bike if you want a more comfortable bike for longer rides it's also more adept downhill. The climbs and descents you're riding are rougher or more technical. Budget is less of an issue for you. Of course, like with so many things in mountain biking, it really comes down to personal preference. Are you a die-hard hardtail fan or have you never looked back from your full susser? Let us know what you think and why in the comments down below. If you haven't already made your mind up, then I hope this video has helped inform you about the pros and cons of each style of bike. If you want to find out more about the Big Nine or 96, then check out the link in the description below and have a look at our mountain bike playlist over here. To keep up to date with all things Merida, make sure you subscribe to our channel over here and feel free to give this video a like if you've enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.